Well, welcome. I'm glad that you guys are here, especially family members of our uh, graduating seniors. Um, it's an exciting time, as uh, many of them are going off to school or even staying here, uh, just a new part of life. And today we want to recognize and honor and just uh, see what all they've done um, throughout their years in high school and stuff. And so I'm going to uh, call them off and read off their different accolades and different things they've been a part of. If we could, it's just, I know we say that in every graduation, hold your applause to the end. Uh, but we'll just uh, let each one be heard and what everything that they have accomplished. And uh, then at the end, we can uh, heap praises on them. So uh, we're going to start out first with Anna Catherine Click. She is the parents of Michael and Dana Click. She is at Brighton High School graduate. Uh, her special activities in high school included volleyball, softball, HOSA, National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, FBLA, yearbook, clinicals, Mu Alpha Theta, Cardinal Chaos, and Total Youth Alumni. Her accomplishments and awards included all district volleyball team, all academic team for volleyball and softball, AP Economics Award, Journalism Award, Cardinal Academic Excellence Award all four years, and the Student of the Month. Upon graduation, Anna attends, uh, plans to attend the University of Memphis to major in occupational therapy. Next, we have Joshua Luke Dawson, son of George and Carrie Dawson. He was at Covington High School, will graduate tomorrow. His special activity in high school included FFA Club. His accomplishments and awards in high school included Spanish Honor Society, ACT Bronze Award. Upon graduation, Joshua plans to attend a Dyersburg State to get his associate's degree and then to follow with his Bachelor's of Business Administration at University of Memphis. Next, we have Christian Blaise DeLashment, son of Aubrey and Ann DeLashment. He is a graduate of Covington High School. His special activities in high school include baseball for all four years, FFA, and the college club. His accomplishments and awards in high school included all tournament team, um, and all district team, and all region all four years. He also got the presidential award in academics. He was ranked the number one 2019 pitcher in the state of Tennessee for both 2017 and 2018. Upon graduation, Christian plans to attend the University of Tennessee and to continue his baseball career and education on a baseball scholarship. Next, we have Brooklyn Elizabeth Gardner, daughter of Matthew and Kristen Gardner, a graduate of Covington High School. While she was in high school, she was uh, the co-captain of the cheer, football cheer team, a four-year starter on the soccer team, and also a two-year state qualifier. She was the vice president of HOSA and member of the National Honor Society. Her accomplishments in high school included number eight in her class, All-American cheerleader, and second team on Metro Soccer. Upon graduation, Brooklyn plans to attend the University of Memphis to major in nursing. Next, we have William Gerald Hefner, son of Tom and Chantel Hefner, a graduate of Brighton High School. He was a member of the Brighton High School football team for all four years. He's part of the track and field team, FCA, and Youth Alive. His accomplishments include a 3.5 GPA, member of the Winterfest Court of 2017, third place award in track and field sectionals 2019. Upon graduation, Will plans to attend the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga in the fall and study actuarial science. Next, we have Hunter Swain Huffman, son of Swain and Catherine Huffman and the late Alicia Huffman. He is a graduate of Brighton High School. While he was there, he was a member of FFA. He kept a job at First Baptist Church and at the Country Club. He began attending Tennessee Technology Center during his senior year of high school. He has been growing two acres of pumpkins during the summer to sell during the fall of each year. His accomplishments include FFA State Degree, FFA Chapter Degree, and FFA Green Hand receiving first welding certificate, certification in shielded ARC welding before the end of his senior year. Upon graduation, he continues to uh, work, go at TCAT to complete his welding certification in December. Next, we have Jillian Claire Hunter, daughter of Jerry and Jamie Hunter, a graduate of Covington High School. While she was in high school, she was part of the softball team and volleyball team all four years and a part of FCCLA. Upon graduation, Jillian plans to attend the Williams Baptist College in Arkansas on a softball scholarship. Next, we have Lindsay Grace Jones, daughter of Angel Jones and Bobby Jones. She is from Tipton Rosemark Academy. While she was in high school, she was part of the cheer team, art club, 
Science Club, yearbook staff, student ambassador, member of the National Honor Society. While she was in high school, she accomplished a cheer captain junior and senior year, and honor roll all four years. Upon graduation, she plans to attend the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. Next, we have Sterling Brock Lomax, son of Caroline Nelson and Ken Lomax. While he was in high school, he played football, baseball, and basketball. Part of, while he was on the football team, he was part of All-State, District MVP, and All-Region. He won the John Tom Williams Scholarship and National Football Foundation Scholarship. On the baseball team, he was All-District, All-Region, District MVP, and he has a baseball scholarship to Austin Peay State University, and he was also named Mr. CHS. Upon graduation, he plans to attend Austin Peay State University on a baseball scholarship. Next, we have Chloe Michelle Price, daughter of Terry and Molly Bell. She was a graduate of Covington High. While she was in high school, she was the host of president and competitor. She was a class president, college club president, member of FFA, part of the Knowledge Bowl and National Honor Society. While she was in high school, she accomplished to be the class historian with a 4.0 GPA and a 32 on her ACT. She was part of the national host of competition in public health. Upon graduation, she plans to attend the University of Memphis to study biomedical engineering and then go to dental school. Next, we have Michael Shevlin, son of Sherry Walker. He is a graduate of Covington High School. While he was in high school, he was part of the track team, cross country, FCA, Special Olympics in 100 meter and 50 meter, and he also made lots of friends. His accomplishments in high school include a two-mile race at a 12.03 pace time, he loves everybody, and he got third place in Special Olympics in 100 meter and second place in 50 meter. Upon graduation, he plans to keep running and explore the world. Next, we have Katie Jane Elizabeth Schaffner, daughter of Rod and Lucy Ann Schaffner. She was a graduate of Mumford High School. While she was there, she was part of the Mumford Band, Mumford FFA, and National Honor Society. Her accomplishments include regional and state winner in the agricultural communications proficiency, she was part of the Rose Bowl Parade and the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade with the band, an outstanding GPA all four years. Upon graduation, she plans to go to the University of Tennessee at Martin to major in pre-vet. Next, we have Corbin Sean Smith, son of Brandon and Cindy Smith. He was a graduate of Covington High School. While he was in high school, he was part of the marching band, jazz band, Tipton Indoor Percussion, Concert Choir, FBLA, Boys Choir, and Spanish Club. His accomplishments include Science National Honor Society, Percussion Section Leader, Bass Captain, and Band Captain. Upon graduation, he plans to attend the University of Memphis and get his degree in music education. Next, we have Grace Ann Stewart, daughter of Mark and Mary Cass Stewart of Brighton High School. While she was in high school, she was a part of the yearbook edi editor. She was a HOSA officer on the Student Council, National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, FBLA, and Cardinal Chaos. Her accomplishments include that she received the DAR Good Citizen Award for 2019-2020 school year. She was a Tennessee Scholar. She was Cardinal Academic Excellence Award all four years. She was part of the Total Youth Leadership. She was a Senior Student of the Month, ACT 30 Plus Club, and GPA of 4.0, ACT of 30. She ranked sixth in her class. Upon graduation, she plans to attend the University of Mississippi, major in biology. Following Ole Miss, she will plan to attend medical school to become a cardiothoracic surgeon. She will also be a part of the provost school at Ole Miss. She was chosen for the chancellor's leadership class for freshman class. Next, we have Drake Ansley Whitmer, son of Justin and Kim Whitmer. He is a graduate of Covington High School. While he was in high school, he played baseball, played golf, and part of FFA. His accomplishments include the President's Award, ACT Award, Hope Award, Hope Scholarship, and Tennessee Promise. Upon graduation, he plans to attend TCAT for welding. I present to you our 2019 graduating class. Y'all want to have a seat, seniors, you have to stay standing for a little bit longer. 
Um, just want to say a few words uh, for the students sit down. Uh, um, many of y'all know Cliff was a youth pastor before me. I've had about two years to try to fix all the wrong that he did uh, to these students. It's been a long process, but it's almost, almost worked. But now I am thankful for the base that he had laid for these students, uh, for many of them that were brought up in the youth ministry and what he poured into them. I was just able to build on top of them. Very thankful for that. As you see from just reading off, many of these students have amazing accolades. They've worked hard. They've put forth effort, even though some of them may disagree with that their senior year these last few weeks. They have put forth effort. They have worked hard in academics, athletics, and other types of clubs, working to try to be the best that they can be. They are an extremely hardworking group, and I know that's going to continue on into college and beyond in the workforce. To parents, they will say, look at how great your students did. You raised them, you loved them, you prepared them for this moment and beyond. You have taught them to be decent human beings, which is something that's rare in today's society that we see. See what your students have done, what your kids have done that you've led them to become and trust them as they go off to college. This is a hard time to let go. Hard time to say you're on your own. But know that what you've prepared, what you've taught them will continue on. If I could actually have the, the parents to stand up, parents and family members of each one of these kids. And while, the, and while the parents keep saying, I want to have, if you taught or coached or was a part of these kids' lives in any way, in high school, middle school, elementary school, whether it was in school, uh, here at church, anything extracurricular, if you could stand up as well. Students, as you can kind of see, we even got some back here in the choir. If you can see, these people poured into your life. These people have given up time of their life, of their day, to pour into you. Now, as you go off to college, remember that. Remember what they've taught you. Remember what they've given you. All right, if y'all could sit down. I want to share a little bit to these students right here. If y'all could turn around and look at me. It's okay. That you can turn your back on the crowd right now. It's going to be okay. Y'all have had four years of fun of, at high school. Getting to do many fun things, getting to be a part of many different clubs, being part of some fun rivalries, Brighton, Covington, High, uh, Mumford, and then Tipton Rosemark. I'm sure you had rivalries too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you got to enjoy high school. But some nice things about high school is that you had your parents to help you out a little bit. You maybe had them help push you in different directions, give you guidance on what classes to pick or what things to be a part of. Now that you're about to go off to college, I'm not going to say that college is the hardest thing you'll ever face because there are some fun stuff. I was a PE major. I thoroughly enjoyed that. But you're going to get to make your own decisions now. You're going to have to figure out which doctor to go to. And there's, trust me, there's more than just normal doctors. You have to figure out which ones you've got to call, which ones you've got to go to. You've got to make your decisions about classes. How are you going to work? Are you going to have a job? What are you going to do with that? You're not going to have people to help guide you along every single step of the way. So it's on you guys now, on what you saw from people standing up from parents, teachers, coaches, what they poured into you these last few years, even 18 years. Use that as you go forward in college and in the workplace. Some advice I want to give to you guys is one, wherever you move off, if you move off, if you don't stay local, find a solid church. Be a part of the church. If, if you move off to college, find a Christian group on campus. There are plenty of them. Plenty of bad groups, too, on campus. Find some good Christian groups to be a part of, to pour into. Like I said, you, you had a lot more uh, structured stuff here. You had parents and people helping you out. In college, where you don't have that, you have a lot more freedom, a lot more chances to mess up, to stumble, to fall into temptation. Sin is a very slippery slope. The further you stay away from that edge, the less likely you'll give in to that temptation. If you have good Christian friends around you, you're involved at a church, you're involved in a Christian group, the less likely that you'll fall into that sin. So stay true to God. Always, always call out to Him, and He will listen. I want to read a few verses to you guys before we close it out up here. Jeremiah 29, chapters 10, chapter, or chapter 29, verses 10 through 14. Many of us know verse 11. That's a very famous quote, very famous verse that people quote all the time. But I want to read the verses around it. It says, starting in verse 10, For this is what the Lord says, 
When 70 years for Babylon are complete, I will attend to you and will confirm my promise concerning you to restore you to this place. Here's verse 11 that we all know. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and to give you a hope and a future. You will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I will restore your fortunes and gather you from the nations and places where I banished you. This is the Lord's declaration. I will restore you to the place from which I deported you. God is talking right here to his Israel nation that he had banished from their promised land because of the sin that they had in their life. How they replaced God with idols. They completely disrespected God and blasphemed him. Yet he still was going to listen to them. He was still going to hear them. And I don't think any of y'all have done anything to get banished by God. We still have sin in our life that God doesn't enjoy. He doesn't like that at all. But just remember that if you're going through any hard times, call out to God. Right here in the verses that follow, it says that I will, be heard, I will hear you and I will be found by you. God is never too far away. If you're going through a hard time, something that's rough, call out to God. Spend time with him and pray to him. He will be heard by you. He wants to spend time with you guys. So as you go off to college, be prepared what life may throw at you. Know that God's always going to be there to listen to you guys. Let's turn around one more time and let our crowd give us another round of applause. I want to pray for us, and then our seniors are going to be able to get out of that fun little robes they're in and sit with you guys. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this graduating class. Thank you for these 15 students. Who have, who have done so much with what you've blessed them with. God, you've given each one of them amazing talents, amazing gifts. Pray that they would use that for your kingdom. They would use each thing that you've blessed them with to give you glory. Pray that as they go off to college, God, they move out of their house or, or go on to different things, that you would continue to use them. They would continue to cry out to you. That if there's one of these students who does not know you, God, they would come to find you before they go off to college. Pray that you use them in great ways as they go out to school. They would make amazing strides in the workplace and in what you bless them with, God. Just be with their parents as they are, are sending one of their children off. Just bless them, God. Give them an extra heap of grace and mercy and love on them, Lord. Again, God, I thank you so much for these students. And it's in your son's name I pray. Amen.